When you want to dissolve a layer or object into particles in HitFilm 2 Ultimate, atomic particles are the way to go. I'm Axel Wilkinson for HitFilm.com, and in this tutorial, we are going to look at how to use atomic particles to create a transition between titles. We'll be focusing on the underlying concept, then we'll look at several different title variations that are constructed around this concept. Our basic approach is thus. Create a title, use atomic particles to make it explode, then resolve back into the original title. Then we can duplicate that title layer, change the text in the copy, and we'll just fade a transition from one layer to the other using the opacity during the explosion of particles. Okay, it's fairly simple, so let's get right into it. We'll select the text tool, I'm going to draw a text box, and I will enter my text. I'll select that, go to the text panel, and I'm going to use a font called Stark. I'm going to center the title and then increase its size to what feels appropriate, somewhere in there. And now I'm going to go into the transform properties and zero out the position to make sure that title is right in the center of the frame. Switch back to my move tool and in the effects tab I will add atomic particles to my layer. You'll notice that immediately a grid of particles becomes visible because that's how atomic particles work. So to hide that grid, to make the title solid once again, we'll go into the atomic particles, particle placement, number of particles, and we'll just increase the number of particles because the more particles there are crammed together, the tighter it'll become. So on the X axis, I'll set that to 800. That tightens things up pretty well. And now in the particle appearance, I'll increase the size from 5 to 7. All right, now we have a solid title once again. Now let's close these and we will use the fractal controls to make this thing explode. Since we need the text to be intact at both ends, we can start by creating those keyframes. So at 2 seconds, let's enable keyframing for the displace strength, the disperse strength, and the size strength. Now jump ahead to 6 seconds. Scroll down so we can see our keyframes, and let's select all three of those, and we'll just create a new keyframe. Now everything before this first keyframe and everything after the second keyframes will use these default settings where everything's zeroed out. So now we can go into the middle and we can change things around without affecting the start or the end. Only the space in between these keyframes will be affected. Displace strength distorts each of the strings of particles in that grid using the wavelength specified. So as we increase this, things get warped and twisted around a bit more. I'm going to set that to 400. Disperse strength takes the individual particles and moves them off center from the string that they're a part of. So as we increase this, the individual particles are pushed farther and farther away from their original position. Okay, I'm going to keep this one pretty low to 15, which doesn't have a lot of effect yet. But when we adjust the wavelength, we can make that more dramatic. So we're going to reduce the wavelength. And as we do that, you see things start to come apart a bit more. And I'm going to bring that down to a value of 5. And you can see that the letters are effectively eliminated now. We can't really tell anymore what that layer used to be. And the size strength, I'm going to set to 1. You can see that just makes some of the particles smaller. There's greater variety in the size from one particle to the next, which adds a little bit of depth to the effect. All right, so now if we scrub through our timeline, you can see we have a title that sits there, explodes into a swarm of particles, and then resolves back to the original title. And this is the core of the atomic effect that we're going to use. This is the concept boiled down to its most basic form. We have start and end keyframes that are holding the zero value to keep the title intact, and those kind of bracket the keyframes in the middle, which control the explosion of particles. So now with the basic keyframing done for the atomic particles, we can create the transition. Go to three seconds, and in the transform properties, enable keyframing for the opacity. Then jump ahead to five seconds, and set the opacity to zero. Okay, now we're going to duplicate this text layer. So we have two copies, and let's name the first one text1, and we'll name the second one text2. Now in text2, let's go to the opacity control, and we just need to reverse the values for these two keyframes. So on this last keyframe, we'll set it to 100, jump to the first keyframe, set that to zero, and now this layer will fade in 
at the same time that the original layer is fading out. Since they're completely identical at this point, we don't see that transition happening, but now we can change the text in the text two layer. All right, so to make that easier, grab the end of text one, and we can just drag that to shortly after the transition is complete. And we'll do the same thing with the beginning of text two. Now, if we move our playhead past the end of text one, it's very easy to select the text from the second text layer. So we can select that and change what it says. And there we go. Now, as we scrub through, you can see this first layer explodes into a cloud of particles and transitions into the second title. And there is our basic technique. Everything we're going to look at from now on is just variations on this core concept. The key factors are that we use the opacity to transition from one layer to the other, and that in the atomic particles, we have keyframes on the extreme of our range that are holding the zero values so that we can change things up in the middle. So you can now experiment with this, keeping in mind that you want to get your atomic settings dialed in completely on the first layer before you duplicate it. It's generally quicker to just copy the layer and change the text than to go through all the atomic settings to make sure all your keyframes match in both layers. So let's look at several variations created with this technique. And I'm not going to go through every value for every keyframe in these examples. I'm going to focus on the general approach but I have made the project file available, so you can see the exact settings I used if you want to. All right, example one. In this first example, I've used quite a few more keyframes, as you can see here, to control the effect. It lasts a bit longer, and there's more keyframes in the middle. A second set of keyframes early on, these two, ensure that the explosion happens very quickly. Then shortly before the end, here you can see things are almost you can start to see the actual letters in the effect there. It's almost resolved. And so I added two sets of keyframes here and here with the same values basically, just to hold the displace and disperse values for a little bit longer before it completely resolves. This keeps all of the particles fairly close to their final position. So I keyframed an increase in speed from 0.1 to 0.5 to ensure that everything stays in motion during that last little resolve. I applied a color gradient and 3D extrusion to the title. I added a background plane with a lens flare on it. And then I added a backlight so that the 3D extrusion appears to be illuminated by that lens flare in the background. I added another light as well, a spotlight to further enhance the appearance of the extrusion. And then I added a grade layer on which I could place a lightning strike which hits the layers kind of as a cause for the explosion that happens. In the 3D extrusion, I animated the Z shift in the position properties to create the slight shift in depth of the title where it appears to be getting closer to the camera. I also used a center point. This 3D point is used to position the 3D extrusion and the atomic particles. And as a result, we can move the camera through 3D space and the particles behave as if it's a genuine 3D cloud. In this case, I just created a little bit of a push in. The camera pushes in closer to the particle cloud and then pulls back out as things start to resolve. Once we add in all those elements around that core atomic particle explosion, this is the end result that we get. Okay, the second example is much simpler. It's just gray text on a black background and the text has the atomic particle effect applied to it. I used a different font and instead of completely exploding, I wanted this title to behave a bit more like a ribbon where the individual letters dissolve, but the title still behaves as one single unit. To do that, I used a much higher wavelength. A longer wavelength lets the strings kind of stay together a little bit better. But in order to ensure that the actual letters get lost, I had to use a much higher disperse strength. See, instead of this being at 15, at the center point, we're at 200. I also kept more time in between the keyframes on the displace strength, so that as the particles were displaced and those waves were introduced, that happened more gradually and smoothly. All right, so that one's fairly simple. Go to the third example. This one introduces a few different elements. Again, you can see that I have 3D extrusion applied to the letters. The actual animation of the atomic particle effect is almost identical to the last example, except that I've scaled all of the keyframes closer together. 
if we select these all and you hold down Alt while you drag one of the end keyframes, it scales the spacing between all of them, right? So I just took the longer spacing that was in our previous example and pushed it all together. And then there's maybe one or two changes in the keyframes as well, but mainly that scaling is all that happened, and that was just to make the transition happen more quickly. The main difference here in comparison to the early examples is that the position and orientation of the titles is animated, right? So the title turns, then it flies up and it resolves in a different position, and then turns again. Once again, I used a center point to control the 3D extrusion and the atomic particles. So by animating the center point, I can control the positioning of the effect, right? So the center point starts there, it rotates, then it moves up to a second point and rotates again. So everything that moves in this composite shot is all driven by that one center point. I created several webs, which I just drew in Photoshop. I saved them as PNGs so that I could have transparency between the strands of webbing. And then I imported those into HitFilm. I made them into 3D planes and then parented them to the center point as well. Once they were driven by the center point, I used the anchor point to offset them so that I could get them framed up properly in my frame. And then I used the position and orientation to animate them flying out of and into the frame. The actual titles and the center point don't actually move that far. If I select the center point again, you can see that's as far as it moves from there to there. But because of the animation in the webs and the background flying out behind them, it makes them seem like the camera is covering a much greater distance. I also added a gradient to the background, a blue gradient, just to give it a little bit more depth and finish the color scheme that I was going for. And to further enhance the appearance of the extrusion, I added several lights to the scene. And then I added a grade layer with some sharpening just to kind of pop the edges out a little bit more, give it an old school hand-drawn sort of look. And here is our third example. So what I hope you take away from these examples is that they all rely on the concept of creating a transition with the atomic particles effect. But at the core, in every case, is the process of animating the fractal settings from zero to various other settings that break the title up and then back to zero. After you have that animation done, duplicate the title, change the text in the second copy, and use opacity to transition from one to the other. In these examples, we just surrounded this core technique with various dressings to create specific title designs. Since you know exactly what settings need to be in place for the start and end, and you begin the process by locking those in, you can freely experiment with the settings in the middle to come up with inventive ways to disintegrate the layer and then bring it back together. If you know the controls for atomic particles, you can dial in exactly what you need. If you're still learning the controls, then you can freely experiment with different settings to see what happens. So please do so, and thank you very much for watching.